it's such a pleasure to be here today. Uh, that's love. It's like coming home. Amen. Coming home to uh, be amongst the people that we love, care about. <laughs> just wish your pastor was better so he'd be here. Amen. Uh, thank the Lord for that. I want you to open your Bibles to uh, James chapter 5. While you're turning there, I just, uh, I, again, our ministry that we're going into is called In Spite Of. And uh, it's really birthed out of being, like I said this morning in, uh, in Sunday school, 28 years of caregiver for our son John. But before I get going, I, 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 got, I got to do this. I, I have to embarrass my wife. For those of you that don't know my wife, honey, stand up. I want you to stand up. Uh, it's my wife, Joanne. Uh, we've been married for 41 years next month. Amen. And uh, we are, we are very, very, um, thankful for her. She's my help me. She keeps me in line. Amen. And I uh, appreciate that. Seated next to her is her cousin Lisa. And I guess you'd be second cousin, right? Lindsay? Yeah. And it's just good to have uh, good to have them here with us today. And just good to be in the house of God. As I was saying, our, our son John was born uh, with uh, multiple uh, disabilities, if you will, multiple unique malformations. Uh, and most of you know us, but there's a lot of you that don't. And so uh, for those of you that do know us, um, you might learn a few things. But uh, I just want to kind of explain where we're going, why we're doing what we're doing. Our son Johnny, again, um, was an inspiration to so, so many people in his 28 years of life. Uh, he, uh, he went through over 40 surgeries. He was born with a cleft lip, cleft palate. Johnny had a, a, really a hole in his face where his upper lip should have been. And uh, he had, uh, he was wall-eyed, he had two heart valves replaced, kidney transplant, uh, diaphragmatic hernia, bilateral inguinal hernias. He, uh, he had many, many, like I said, over 40 surgeries during his lifetime. But Johnny faced his life, in spite of all that, faced his life, for the most part, with a smile on his face. Yeah. He had a sweet spirit about him. He, uh, he, uh, he was just, uh, again, an inspiration to so many. How many people told me now through the years, uh, they were going in for surgery, going to the dentist, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, I just thought about Johnny. I just thought about what Johnny had been through, and I thought whatever I'm getting ready to go through is nothing compared to what he's been through. And uh, Those are the kind of impact that, that Johnny had. Uh, people, Johnny was also deaf. The deaf church at, uh, here at Parfue was started um, 18 years ago. Uh, my wife and I got that ministry going. The Lord got the ministry going, amen. But, uh, but uh, we served there uh, in the Deaf Church for eight years. And then uh, we moved on to Antrim Baptist Church 10 years ago. But uh, um, in spite of all of Johnny's challenges, he still had dreams. He had lots of dreams. Uh, Johnny uh, wanted to eventually get married. He wanted to have an apartment. He wanted to uh, uh, have a life like his brothers, amen. When, uh, when we'd all get together as a family, there was times where Johnny would get a little bit down because, uh, you know, he didn't have a wife yet. Uh, and so uh, the thing was he didn't care that he didn't have children because uh, Johnny never wanted children. He didn't want kids. Uh, he didn't want pets. As a matter of fact, Johnny made a list uh, of the qualifications of the woman that he was going to marry. And the qualifications, uh, she had to be pretty. She had to know sign language, but yet she had to be hearing. She had to make sure that he would get to all his doctor's appointments. She would have to take care of his medications. She would have to do, and about, as, you, as I read through that list one day, I thought, this boy wants to marry his mother for me. <laughs> She's spoken for, amen. But, but that's the truth. He really did. He wanted to marry, marry uh, someone that, just like his mom, because she took care, such good care of him. But uh, over the last two years of Johnny's life, um, he was in dialysis, kidney dialysis, the transplant that he had. Uh, lasted for 17 years, which is a, a good long time for a kidney transplant, but yet it finally failed and he was on dialysis the last two years. And Johnny was always in pain his entire life, but the last two years just seemed to be more intense than, than he ever, ever had. And uh, um, his health was deteriorating. He was hospitalized several times for catheter infections. Uh, we had lost him, almost lost him twice while he was in the hospital. And so the last two years, Johnny kind of gave up on his dreams. He knew that his health was never going to get any better than what it was at that point. So he took that list of qualifications for a wife and set it aside. And he began to pray. Johnny had great faith. Johnny knew that he was on his way to heaven. And he knew once he got there, he was getting a new body. Yeah. Man. And, so, and so Johnny began to pray and ask God to take him home. And the hardest thing that uh, Joanne and I ever had to do 
was to agree in prayer with him that the Lord would take him and relieve him from all the pain that he had been in. And uh, October 3rd, 2015, the Lord answered Johnny's prayer. Uh, early on a Saturday morning, um, Joanne was in uh, Atlanta visiting Jason, our, our middle son, and our new grandbaby at the time. And uh, I was in my office working, uh, getting ready to go to church, and uh, I heard some noise in Johnny's room. I even texted Joanne and said, hey, Johnny's up. You know, and uh, that morning he uh, got up, he got dressed, he opened his blinds, turned his walker towards the door in his room, and uh, the Lord took him. His heart quit, and uh, he just uh, he went to heaven. Um, I heard some noise. I didn't think much of it. Then, then I was starting to get aggravated with him because he hadn't come out of his room yet, and I had to go. I had things to do, and I had to pick up the phone and call my wife and let her know that Johnny was gone. That uh, most of you were at the funeral, and I, I thank the Lord for for your presence and for your encouragement through it all. But uh, through all that, the Lord worked in, in my heart about the next step that Joanne and I were to make. And, and one of the steps was to write the book. Write the book. Many of you have read the book. A lot of you have, a lot of you have said so many good, kind things about this book. And I just appreciate so much uh, your, your support. And uh, uh, those of you that have read it and, and, have, and have said good things about it, I thank you. Those of you that have read it and have not said anything, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> it's all right. I'm just kidding. But uh, there are more copies on the back back there if you'd like to purchase a book today. $10, $10 today here at uh, Parkview Baptist Church, $15, $14.95 on Amazon if you want to buy it there. But uh, uh, we'll just give you a deal today. But I'm, I'm so grateful for the opportunity and for the privilege to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and to have been able to be Johnny's dad. Amen. Because the Lord has used not only Johnny, but he's used my wife and I down through the years to encourage a lot of people. And that's our ministry. We want to go out, like I told, him in some, told you folks in Sunday school, want to encourage people that are going through difficulty. Want to, uh, uh, to educate people that want to help someone that's going through a difficult time. But also want to equip the saints of God to be able to reach out to others. And we'll talk a lot about that this evening. Uh, how we can reach out to other people and be a blessing to them, all right? So uh, that's really our ministry, and uh, I just uh, I just thank the Lord for the opportunity. Pastor Brown has availed me to be able to, to speak again. We'll be speaking again this evening, more of a, more of a uh, uh, teaching time than it will be a preaching time, but uh, this morning I want to preach uh, from, uh, we're going to start, uh, I told you we're going to be in Job again, we'll be in Job again if you want to put your fingers in the book of Job, but uh, James chapter number 5, and I just want to read two verses of scripture. I'm going to ask you to stand with me if you're able, as we read the word of God, James chapter 5, verse number 10. We, we spoke about this this morning in Sunday school, but it's where we're going to start off, and uh, we'll go from there. Take my brother and the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. This morning, I want to just bring a message called Relationship Through the Unexpected. This morning we talked about being ready for the unexpected. Today I want to talk about the second, this morning I want to talk about a, a, a relationship through the unexpected. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now and thank you again for the privilege of being here today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, great group of folks that are out here today. Lord, we just pray now that as we open the word of God, you would bless. Lord, the music has set the table for the word of God, prepared hearts. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me this morning. Lord, there may be someone here today by chance that does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They may be trusting religion. They may be trusting their good works. They may be trusting in something other than Christ. Lord, I pray that today they realize the need for Jesus. Lord, no doubt there are people here that are hurting, that are going through trials, going through a difficult time. I pray today you would encourage those folks. Lord, I pray 
that as we look into your word today, that, Lord, you would speak. Father, I pray you'd baptize me with the Holy Ghost. I need your power to preach the word of God this morning. Let it go forth with the anointing of God. Lord, we know that you'll do a work, and right now we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, if you will. <laughs> the faith that Job had, again, I talked about this this morning in Sunday school, helped sustain me through some of uh, the most difficult times in my life. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. We might have hope. God gave us his word, the Old and the New Testament. This is God's word that I hold in my hand today. I hope you believe that. Today. The Lord gave us the Bible so that you and I would have, number one, a guidebook for life. Number, number one, really, to know how to have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. But a guidebook for life to help us through our difficult times. Job was a man that went through unbelievable trials. He lost his livelihood, he lost his children, and then he ultimately lost his health. Yet he kept his integrity, and he didn't lose his faith in God. He maintained his relationship with the Lord. Job speaks, or James speaks of the patience of Job. Now that word patience there is interesting. We think, oh, it's like waiting in line, right? We, we have to be patient. But it has the idea of being consistent. Being consistent. Job's relationship with God was not based on his experiences in life. You know, when things are going good, my relationship with God is close. I can hug God, I can love God because everything's going well. But when things are going bad, I'm angry with God and I'm not going to have a relationship with God. That wasn't Job. Job's life, the Bible says, was consistent. The patience that he had, it continued. He had an ongoing, continual relationship with God. Throughout his heartache, throughout his pain, throughout his grief, throughout his trials. Romans chapter 15 that we read just a minute ago tells us that the scriptures were written for our learning. And that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Patience, it's the same word that describes Job's relationship with God. We through our consistent walk with the Lord and the comfort of the scriptures, we can have hope today. We can have hope in the Lord, hope in, while we're going through our difficulties. If we maintain a consistent walk through our trials, stay in the word of God, he will give us comfort and he will give us hope. Man, the world needs hope today, friend. Yeah. People need some hope. You're right. And the hope comes from God. Amen. We need to be people that are willing to share that hope. We need to hold the relationship of our relationship with God through our trials. He is the God of all comfort. I preached on that when I was here a month or so ago. He wants to comfort us in all our tribulation. We can have hope knowing that God will get us through our trials. Amen. Now I want us to take a look at three responses that Job had that will help you and I have a consistent walk with God as we go through our trials. So turn back into the book of Job. All right. Find the book of Psalms. Go back one more book. Find the book of Job. And we're going to go back to chapter number one and verse twenty. Again, these are some scriptures that I read this morning, but they're going to help us again this morning uh, in this in this service. Job chapter one, verse twenty. The Bible says that then Job arose, rent his mantle, shaved off his head, and fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. First of all, I want us to see the reaction Job had to the unexpected. The reaction that he had. The Bible says Job worshipped God. He worshipped God. You know, we can't imagine... The pain that Job was experiencing at this point in his life. 
One after another, the reports came in. You lost your cattle, you lost your camels, you lost your sheep, you lost your servants, you lost all these things. He lost his livelihood. Then he lost his children, one right after another. Can, I, I can't even imagine the grief that was in his heart at this moment of time in his life. He lost everything. The unexpected happened to Job, one right after the other in a moment of time in his life. He suffered the loss of his children. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us this, but in my mind, my, my, my way of thinking is, hey, possibly he lost son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, maybe even grandchildren in that when the house collapsed now. He lost servants. You know, he was an employer. I mean, you look at how many cattle and how all the, all the, Job had a farm. I'm talking about a working farm. All right? And he had to have hundreds of employees working for him. I'm sure he had a relationship with most of them. With a lot of them. He lost friends. He lost his children. All at one time. The Bible says he fell down and he worshipped. He worshipped the Lord. Job began the process of grief. And might I tell you, it is a process. It is a process that you have to go through. I read in the book, grief is the process of facing the death of a dream. You know, we can grieve over a lot of different things in our life. It doesn't always necessarily need to be the loss of a loved one. Loss of a job, loss of a relationship phone call, a diagnosis from a doctor. Job's reaction to his loss was he worshipped God. You know, the Bible here doesn't say that he praised God. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible doesn't say that he thanked God. As a matter of fact, the word praise and the word thanks or thanksgiving is not found in the book of Job. But he worshipped. He worshipped the Lord. You know, in his grief and in his pain, he fell down, he worshipped God because he knew that he did not have the strength he would need to get through the trial that he was in. He knew he needed something much bigger than himself. He needed strength far beyond that which he had. He knew that he needed the strength of a consistent walk with the Lord. You know, when our son John was born, you know, it was back in 1987, um, uh, our oldest son Bob, he was in the emergency C-section. I had planned on, you know, I was the, the, the Lamaz coach, right? Lamaz was big back then, I don't know if it still is. I'm, you know, I'm grandpa now, so it doesn't, you know, my grandpa ain't going to no delivery room. Amen. But, but, but I couldn't go in the delivery room with, with, uh, with our first son because uh, he was in the emergency C-section. Our second son, Jason, he, uh, he was born by a planned C-section. They didn't allow the fathers in the delivery room back then for the planned C-section. But this one, 1987, hey, things had changed. So I was able to go into the, into the delivery room. Man, I had my scrubs on. I was all set. Joanne was all prepped. And they called me in. I sat down by her head. And we were all excited. We had been serving the Lord. Uh, been, been right with God. <clears throat> I got right with God. About a year and a half before, my wife had gotten saved. And man, uh, we were so excited that God was going to give us this little girl because we'd been praying for this little girl for, for uh, uh, man, for pertinent near a year. And, uh, and all of a sudden, the doctor said, um, I could see the, the nurses and the doctor looking at each other, looking back and forth as the baby was being delivered because there was just, you know, these sheets all over everything. They, I didn't want to watch, didn't want to see nothing. I just paid attention to Joanne. And he said, now, now he's got a he's got a hair lip. And I said, "Oh, okay, all right." And they can, and then everybody reassured us that everything would be okay. Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. They can do wonders. And then they showed us Johnny, and like I said, he had to hold his face, and his eyes were pointing in two different. And there was obviously some things that were very, very wrong. <coughs> they took the baby and rushed him off. Told me I had to leave, and they took me, took me, and escorted me back to the locker room. <laughs> and all I remember from that moment, my heart was crushed. Not, hey, hey, folks, let me, let me. I'm not here complaining. I hope you understand that. 
how we love Johnny and we thank God that he was our son. But that moment was hard. And I remember leaning against the locker, tears just pouring down my face. I said, God, I can handle this. I need your grace. I need your strength. Can I tell you? He came through. He came through for 28 years and beyond. I knew that I was going to have to help my wife. I knew that my family, yeah. my unsafe family, was going to have a lot of questions. Yeah. And I needed to have a walk with God, like we talked about this morning. I was going to have to maintain my testimony. I had to have his strength because I did not possess it. You know, I tried to thank God for giving us a disabled child. I tried to praise God for giving us a child with all these problems. But can I tell you something? They weren't sincere. The words weren't sincere. Come on, really? I can tell you now. I can tell you almost 30 years later, I praise God and I thank God for allowing us to have such a wonderful gift in our home as our son. But friend, when I was going through it, I'm just going to be honest with you. I didn't feel like praising God. Pastor, that's terrible. No, it's real. It's exactly what happened. But you know what? That's what I thought I had to do. Everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, <clears throat> when the unexpected happens, we need to react in worship. Then, you know what? Probably the hardest thing we need to do, if we're going to continue having a consistent relationship with God, is reconciling the unexpected. Say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Reconciling the love of God. I don't doubt that God loves me. I hope you don't doubt that God loves you. Reconciling the love of God with this deep pain yeah. and heartache that you feel. How am I going to reconcile those two thoughts, those two realities in my life? Those two realities in our lives. Hey, friend, you love God today, you don't doubt God's love. Amen. I pray that you never do. But someday there's going to be a time where you're going to have to try to reconcile the pain that you're going through, the heartache that you're going through, with God's love. Because can I tell you, they really are not separated. But when you're going through it, a lot of times, it sure feels like they are. We know that God loves us, but why, why is he allowing this pain and heartache and this grief in my life? You know, <clears throat> many times this is where a lot of people's relationship with God begins to fall apart, begins to unravel. Because it's hard to fathom that a God that loves me is allowing me to hurt so badly. May God help us today to reconcile our pain with his great love that he has for us. First of all, first of all, friend, if we're going to reconcile God's love and our pain, we have to be honest about how we feel. Yes, sir. All right? Well, pastor, we cannot trust our emotions. You're right, we can't. We can't trust our emotions. But God made us emotional people. God gave us emotions. We're not a bunch of robots just going through life and nothing's going to affect us, nothing's going to bother us. God gave us emotions. We're emotional creatures, some more emotional than others. I'm one of them. I'm, one, I'm like Pastor Brown. Amen. I'll blubber and cry about anything. Amen. But friend, God gave us emotions. He gave us the ability to love, right? And our ability to love comes with a cost, friend. Right. Because when you lose someone you love, 
the grief is that much greater. Mm -hmm. That's the cost of love. Because someday we're going to lose someone that we love, aren't we? And that grief, the grief is the cost of the great love that we have there. Can I, can I say today, don't be afraid to ask why. That's right. Hey. So Pastor, I, you know, Pastor Ashley comes walking in here, and I hope, and, and, and I'm just trying to be real with you today. Amen. I'm just trying to be real with you. You know, we grow up in church, some of you grow up in church, and you hear you never ask God why, you never question God. You're not questioning God. You're just wanting that. You, you, that's a real question on your heart, right? Let's be real this morning. Look at Job chapter number 3 and verse 1. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed his, cursed his day. Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. Let the day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above. Neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness the shadow of and, and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Look down to verse number 11. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees uh, prevent me? Why did, why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breast that I should suck? Here, Job saying why? Why? He hated it the day that he was born. He was in such grief and such pain. He wished he had never been born. This is when I fell in love with the book of Job. You know why? He's real. He's being real. He's saying the truth. He's got his friends sitting there. They're all, they're all uh, 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 mourning with him, weeping with him. And all of a sudden, he opens his mouth, and he just pours his heart out to his friends. This is the truth, fellas. This is just how I feel. You know, he asked, why? Why didn't, God, why didn't you just let me die? His pain was so great that he wished he was never been born. You know, God can handle our wives. You know that? God can handle the questions when we say, well, why, Lord, why? Why? You know, friend, there was times in the middle of the night at the University of Michigan Hospital where I, I would want to ask the doctors, why in the world are you coming in at 2 o'clock in the morning having somebody come in to draw Johnny's blood? Why? I wasn't asking God. I was asking, I wanted to ask the doctors. I'd ask the people, why are you drawing his blood so often? There are certain tests they have to do. Johnny was always so gracious. But you know what? There were times I asked God, why? Why? Why did you allow this person to come in and not be able to hit a vein, not be able to draw his blood, not be able to get any blood from him because they try again and again and they would dig and they would dig and they would dig. I said, why? Johnny was always gracious. There were times he'd look at me like, would you please tell this lady to leave? You know, they'd say, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Then I realized maybe God wasn't teaching me anything. Maybe God wasn't teaching Johnny anything, but maybe he was teaching that person that was drawing his blood. So I don't know why. Friend, there's nothing wrong with asking God why. <clears throat> the Lord knows you hurt. Right? The Lord knows your heart better than you do. So many times we just want to stuff our emotions. We want to stuff how we feel. And that's wrong. That doesn't help you heal. It doesn't help you get better. We've got to be honest, honest with ourselves. When we stuff our feelings, friend, we don't allow ourselves to grieve properly. Like I said, it's a process. We need to go through it. You know, it hurts us deeply when we stuff our emotions. You know, we've been conditioned to never question God. But then the Bible says Job questioned God. Right? We, God's not being offended when you ask the why question. 
It's not like God's in heaven. What? Are you questioning something that I'm allowing in your life? Foolishly. Amen. Don't, 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 don't curse God and die like Job, Job's wife told him. But to ask God why, out of an honest heart, isn't something that God, God is, is, uh, is, is going to be offended by. We also reconcile the love of God with our pain by the recognition that God owns everything we possess. Back there in Job chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, and, uh, uh, yeah, 21, it said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave. The Lord taketh taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse number, uh, uh, chapter Chapter 2 and verse 10 says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job acknowledged that God was the rightful owner of everything he had, including his children. God gave us those children. God has the right of ownership to all of them. Right. But if we're going to reconcile God's love, and we're going to reconcile our pain, and we want to put the two of those and realize that, you know what, in spite of all that, in spite of all that pain, God still loved Job through it all. Even though he lost everything. You know, everything we have today is going to decay. Amen? We're not taking anything with us when we die. We will leave it to our ungrateful children <laughs> and, and our grandchildren. Yeah. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. All that we have has been given us by God. He is the rightful owner to everything. And that's what Job had to come to grips with. I can reconcile the loss of my son because of the because of the love of God. And you can too. Then, friend, I want us to see the reward of the unexpected. I turn back into Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38. Job had spoke his mind. Then his three friends begin to accuse him. And then they banter back and forth. They're going back and forth, uh, uh, accusing Job of sin. And, and that, that's the reason why all this is happening. Job's saying, well, you know what? The wicked, the wicked still prosper. All these things are still going on. You know, the Bible, rain, the Bible tells us that, that, that it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. So they're going back and forth. They're going back and forth. They're going back and forth. And man, in verse, chapter number 38 and verse 1, God shows. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Friend, the reward of the unexpected in your life and in my life is God's going to show me. Whatever you're going through, whatever heartache you may be going through, whenever we're in times of grief and when we're times of sorrow and times of, of, of heartache, friend, we need to realize God's going to show up. Oh, it may not be in a whirlwind. We may not hear an audible voice. But man, we might read the word of God in, in our Bible with tears streaming down our cheeks and it can't even get past a, a couple of verses. But those two verses, God speaks loud and clear. Or it may be a time in prayer or we're bowed and, and crying out, pouring out our heart to God, saying, oh God, why? Why? Hand of God comes down. Pat says, I'm happy. Yes, sir. It says, I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Friend, we need to understand God has promised us He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is there no matter what we're going through, no matter what our heartache, no matter.
matter what our trial is in our life, no matter how deep the grief is in our life, friend, look for the hand of God because He's going to show up. Amen. He's going to show up. <clears throat> Job saw his trials as coming from the Lord, but they were coming as a direct attack of Satan, weren't they? Satan was trying to destroy Job's testimony and prove God wrong. Have you considered my servant Job? God said they could save him. Even though Job even looked at his trials as an attack from God. Read the book of Job and you'll see these things in there. But nothing could have been further from the truth at that time. God was allowing him to go through those things, yes. But all that time, Job was glorifying the Father. He was glorifying the Lord. The Lord showed up in his trials. Job chapter 23 and verse 10 says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You know, God blessed Job with double of all the things that he possessed. Gave him ten more children. But everything was tempered, I'm sure, in Job's life. With the memory his other ten children that had died. And the grief that he had. Oh yes, we look at Job and Job's, Job's testimony. One of the things I want, to, I want us to understand here today is when we're going through trials, God wants to use us, use us and use our trials, like I said this morning, as a catalyst. This is called the book of Job. It's not called the book of trials. Or the book of tribulation. It's called the book of Job. Why? Because he kept his integrity. Because he trusted God in spite of deep agony and pain. Job's testimony lives on some 4,000 years plus after he was alive. And today we're still talking about him. Still talking about him. Job knew the presence of God through the unexpected. Like I said earlier, God has promised you and I that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We need to hold on to that. We need to look for it. If we desire to have a consistent walk with God through our circumstances, you know what? He's going to show up. We will be able to sense his presence with us. He will be our consistency. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this morning, do you want to have a relationship through the unexpected? First of all, let me tell you this. You're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You cannot have a relationship with God apart from His Son. His Son died on the cross for our sin. The Bible says we're all sinners. We're all guilty. You may be religious, you may be a member of Parkview Baptist Church, but friend, that doesn't give you a relationship with God mm -hmm. apart from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's no other way to God but through Christ. Mm -hmm. You want to have a relationship with God, that's where it starts. It starts with Him. Trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today. Then, our reaction to the unexpected. Can I tell you, when trials come, friend, this isn't the time to jump up and down and say, praise the Lord. It's the time to worship. It's the time to fall on your face before God and cry out and say, Lord, I need you more than ever. Worship the Lord. He is the source of our strength. He's not expecting our thanks. He's not expecting our praise in the midst of the trial. But he wants us to worship him. Then reconcile the unexpected. God's love and our pain. First of all, be honest with your feelings. Be honest with your feelings. Be honest with yourself and be honest with God. He can handle it. You're not going to offend him. Don't be afraid to ask God why. And then the reward of the 
unexpected friend. He's going to show up. He's going to show up on this year. So today, how's your relationship with God? Let's, let's, let's ask God today, where am I in my relationship with you? Are you going through a trial today? Friend, can I tell you, the Lord's here with you. And he wants to help you. You know, there's times where I'll never forget <clears throat> sitting in church services feeling sorry for myself. Don't look at me like that. I know y'all. Y'all been there. feel sorry for myself, wonder where God is yeah. in the middle of the service. It just seemed like God just snuggled in next to me in the pew, put his arm around me and said, right. Yeah. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. You got me on your side. Yeah. That's good. So friend, today, will you worship? Just worship God. Let Him strengthen you through whatever it is you're going through. Father, we come to you now, Lord. We thank you so much for this time. Lord, again, I, I just thank you for your word, the book of Job, his testimony, and how it's strengthened me down through the years. Lord, I just pray that somehow through this message, someone got some help. Lord, might you move in. There might be people sitting here right now, their hearts are broken. And they want you to show up. Oh God, please. Put your arms around and hold them close. Let them know you're with them. Father, I don't know the needs of every heart here, but you do. Lord, I pray that you would just do the work during this invitation time. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Is there anyone here today that would say, Pastor Ashley, I don't know that I have a relationship with God because I don't know that I've ever trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And this morning I realize I have a need to trust Christ. Not religion, not my baptism, but to trust Christ. You say, Pastor Ashley, I need today to trust Christ as my Savior so I can start a relationship with God. Can you raise your hand and say, that's me, Pastor Anybody like that? Just put, raise your hand. I'll pray for you. I won't come to you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Say, Pastor, I need to have a relationship with God. I need to come to Christ today. Anyone? All right, children of God, would you say with an uplifted hand today, Pastor, God spoke to my heart in this message. Pray for me. Can you raise your hand and say, that's me, Pastor? Oh, many, many hands. God bless you. Heavenly Father, you've seen the hands that have been raised. Lord, there were some hands that were raised if people need a relationship with you. God, I pray that you give them the courage during this invitation time to come forward and to trust Christ. And Lord, many people raised a hand and said that you had spoken in their heart. I pray, dear God, that they would be willing to allow you to provide whatever it is they need right now. Lord, I pray that you just run this invitation do what needs to be done in our hearts, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to stand with me if you will. Amen.